Uh, security, escort this gentleman out, please. Come on, Soda Pop, let's go. 1140 KSOO. Sixteen minutes before five o'clock. Class continues. Viewpoint University, eleven four zero KSOO Friday Afternoon Club. Uh, joining us this afternoon is live and in Technicolor in the faculty lounge is Bruce Danielson. Uh, he has been a guest here numerous times. His latest uh, uh, escapade in public life has been the stop the funding uh, petition drive uh, to stop uh, try to stop the building of a city administration building that uh, he doesn't think a lot of people don't think either needs to be built at all or doesn't need to be as expensive as it is. Anyway, he joins us live in Technicolor with a little up date on since you turned the petitions in on monday what's happened well i just turned in a few more petitions there this morning that was kind of fun to do it's the people the people of sioux falls really want to be involved in this thing and they everybody wants to have their voice being heard in this thing and i've in 44 years of doing petitions i've said this has been the most amazing experience What we're doing right now is trying to get city council support. We're looking at potential legal actions that might be involved. We're kind of exploring a lot of different possibilities to uh, to stop the funding. You know, it isn't. It hasn't been on the building itself. It's been on the funding mechanism and how they're abusing that process and and excluding the people of Sioux Falls from their voice being heard in this whole process. Okay, let's talk about that for just a moment. When you say the city abusing the process be more specific well this is the first time in in anybody's recollection and and history of sioux falls where where the city council has voted against such an expenditure and the mayor's office the administration has gotten involved and is forcing the issue forward and that's what has so many people upset if the council would have been a hundred percent for it or at least the majority of the council would have been for it at any point in time, it might have been a different story. But in in talking with over, I've talked to over 2,500, maybe 3,000 people in the last three weeks. I've gotten a lot of the signatures that are on those petitions. Mm -hmm. And not a single one of them agreed with the process that was done where the city council was overruled completely by by the administration. Well, but it's, but in fairness... Bruce, the city charter does give the mayor veto power. Oh, he does have veto power. And that's what he did. And that's what he did. But in in this whole process, the veto's never been used to spend $25 million against the will of the public. Yeah, I think this is the first time in his term that he's vetoed anything. And I, since we started uh, this form of government back in the early 90s, I know there haven't been many things that have been vetoed that I recall. Right. And... And the things that have been vetoed, I've, I've sat through and watched some of the old videos and, and done a lot of the research on some of the previous videos. And I haven't seen where the, the mayor has decided to go do a large expenditure of something. Or, you know, the mayor has come in and, and broken a tie. I've watched several of those happen. And none of those have been for a $25 million expenditure. Okay. So you turn the petitions in. There are some interesting legal questions about timing of things and all of that um some of the news stories from a week or so ago said in order to actually have an election the before the bonds are sold the city council is going to have to have a special meeting and receive them and on and on what's the status of all of that i haven't heard about any special meeting yet once the clerk gets done certifying the ballots or the petition excuse me he has to certify about 287 signatures out of the out of the group of signatures, mm-hmm. and what that does is that says that we have valid signatures through the way the extrapolation works. Okay, so is that done yet? Because he's had all week. You turn these in he's, about noon on Monday. Right? Yeah, and so, uh, on Tuesday. Tuesday, excuse me. And so he should be getting close to wrapping up. It shouldn't take very long to do this job. But I'm, you know, I'm patient. I'm going to work with it. Okay. And then so the, there's several ideas floating among city council members that I've been contacted about. And, and we've talked about some of these in the past. So I don't know if it's going to be a special meeting yet, if that's going to be on any agendas. 
Uh, if it's going to have to be September 6th, and if it's September 6th, then, then certain actions have to take place in a certain time period. We're, whenever state law says whenever a group of citizens brings forth a certified petition, mm -hmm. then it has to be placed on the ballot for voting. Mm -hmm. And that is, that is requirement. The, the mayor can't veto it. It has to happen. So now with this, the way that they did this, this funding ordinance back in May, the mayor would be allowed, he would be allowed, he's not required to sell those bonds on October 1st, nor could he sell them on October 1st or on October 2nd, because that's a Saturday and Sunday. So the third would be the first chance he'd have to sell anything, mm -hmm. and nothing says he has to sell them on the 3rd of there or even the 3rd of November. So it's up to... The people to call 367-8800 and t tell the mayor's office that we don't want to do this. We we want to have a voice in this process. Okay, so there to me there there's some of the legal quagmire and I in, in this deal is the the time frame for having a special election and uh, the soonest it's it's got to be like. 30 days, there's got to be notification like 30 days before you can have a special election. So if the council doesn't meet until September 6th, that takes it into October uh, and uh, beyond that, uh, October 3rd even. So um, in terms of the legality of this, are you seeking legal counsel to get this figured out? Because somewhere yes. along the line, I'm sure there's going to be a judge involved in this. Uh, that's one of the things we're working on, and I'd love to have any attorney that would be willing to to look at the information that we've got together, the case law that we've got together that we would like to have discussed. There's actually some really interesting cases from the, the teens and 20s that are often cited and never challenged in these types of issues. And we would like to have those explored and somebody help us do that. And maybe that will put an end to this whole process right here. We're going to take a break. We'll be back with Bruce Danielson. This is Viewpoint University, KSOO. County, you're on campus at VPU on 1140 KSOO. 6 minutes before 5 o'clock Rick Noby along with Bruce Danielson he's uh are you the chair of stop the funding is that the handle you're going with co-chair with Co -chair. Kermit Staggers Oh with Kermit how's Kermit I haven't seen him in a while Well he just got back in town he was on a vacation for for a week or so out to the east coast and Oh good for him I haven't had a chance to talk to him yet since he got back so I'm kind of okay. anxious to talk to him today or tomorrow Okay so we've got these petitions that have been turned in does the state law require the city clerk or the city to respond to those within a certain period of time? Yes, at, by the next meeting, either special meeting or the next regularly scheduled meeting. So on the regularly scheduled meeting is September That'd be the 6th. 6th. So one way or the other, there's going to be some response there to this. There has to be an election scheduled. Okay. They cannot They cannot. Assuming they've got these. enough valid petitions. Exactly. Yeah. And you're confident that you do? Very. Okay. So they've got to do that. And then their options are either right away or they could put this off. They can move it to 2018 to the next regularly scheduled city election, or they could have one in October. Okay. Or they could have one at the school board next year. There's, There's a lot other, of options. A lot of other options. The, pr the problem gets to be that October thing with selling the bonds. Yes. Because the mayor has pretty much indicated he's going to move ahead with this. Yes, that's he. Our understanding is it's almost like he feels like he's backed against the wall, and we'd like to give him options. Mm -hmm. You know, there's we, the people of Sioux Falls, and we really feel like there's at least seventy percent or more of the of the val valid voters of Sioux Falls that are want to have a voice in this. So, if there's so many ifs in this thing, and I get that, I, I take a look at this. The city has hired people to help. Put the bond issue together, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and and I don't know how many bond lawyers are involved in this thing, but one of the things that I think about, and I'm just thinking about this, I don't know what the facts would be, but the reality that there are these petitions out there, and there may be an election with this. 
depending upon how that September 6th meeting goes. If the mayor says, I want to move ahead with this project and the heck with, and he wouldn't say the heck with the public vote, but just move ahead with it and let the public vote and it wouldn't matter because you're selling the bonds. If I were the bond council, I'd be saying, you know, we better just wait until we see what the public does with this because ultimately the public decides this stuff. Well, I was actually contacted by a person who deals with bond bond companies Mm -hmm. and that is a concern in a lot of states they don't want to get involved when when they could actually end up having to refund people's money Mm -hmm. because of the bond issue and they don't want this all tied up in court and all the resources that that go into either having a lawsuit or paying people back and there's a lot of things there's jeopardies involved here that that our administration's not talking about okay well, there's all kinds of suppositions here, and we, you and I can suppose all we want, right. and, and that wouldn't do anybody any good. I want to go back to the beginning of this. Specifically, what don't you like about the proposal to build additional office space for city government? First off, I've never opposed the building. I, I, you know, When they proposed it, I thought, oh, that's a nice-looking building. Then I, then I started wondering, why do we need it? Mm-hmm. And then I've also wanted to stress that we've never been opposed to any individuals. You know, we've, I've made sure that everybody who's carried a petition, as far as I know, never talked about a, a specific building, look, or anything else, or okay. a person. So okay. the other is the, the funding, funding mechanism. mechanism. That's your problem. So yes. if it's not funded by a bond issue, how should it be funded? Well, wh- why should we have to go out into the and build a building like this. There's a lot of different designs. There's a lot of different concepts for doing things with the county. There's, you know, there's a lot of similar departments that actually interact quite a bit. Yeah. And they should be in the same building. And there is actually the capability of, of expanding the current administration building that's never been discussed. Mm-hmm. And that could tie into everything. City could be involved in a lot of things. Okay. But they've never been allowed. Okay. On that note, we're going to stop the conversation because we're out of time. Bruce Danielson, thank you very much for the update. We'll be interested to see what happens next week. Yeah, absolutely. This is Viewpoint University. Hope you have a good weekend. Y'all come back now. What kind of morons run this outfit?